Hey, everybody. My name is Jennifer. This is Metatronus speaking. And we're going to be talking a whole lot today about numerology. Um, I am not an expert on numerology by any means, but the reason I want to talk to you guys about this is because a lot of times guides use numbers in order to communicate with us. And I say a lot of times, but really they are always doing it. It's just a matter of whether or not we are paying attention to it. So I don't want you to think that, oh, you know, yeah, I see numbers from the angels or my guides, but it's not that important. It's not like I'm hearing them talk to me. Um, don't think like that because <laughs> they still talk to me with numbers all the time, all the time. So if you are ignoring numbers or if you're ignoring feathers or if you're ignoring any other sign that they are leaving for you you're just missing out on like the fun and the messages so you know make sure you're not um like uh i want to say like being a snob make sure you're not making a hierarchy out of communication from your guides and feeling like oh that's not that's not that important that's not I'm probably just imagining the numbers or whatever. No, you're not. So let's talk let's talk about the numbers a little bit. Let me pull up my notes. Numbers hold a specific frequency, and your guides will regularly use these to communicate messages to you. And again, it's just a matter of us becoming aware of it. It's already out there for us. We think of our guides as rarely trying to communicate with us, but in reality, they are trying to communicate with us like all day long. If you really pay attention, you should probably be noticing like three or four times where they are like dropping something for you. And they're doing it a lot more than that. It's just, it's hard for us to pick up on all of it because we're focused on living like a 3D life. Even if you communicate with your guides through oracle cards or runes or channeling, they are still going to use numbers to talk to you. This is an easy way for all of us to understand either where we are in our life right now. Like sometimes they're... Um, making a reference to like what's going on right now or what's coming up very shortly. When, <laughs> wouldn't we all like to have a little peek into the future, right? Well, the angels are using numbers to talk to you about it. They are personally encouraging you to take advantage of, you know, whatever messages they're sending through in that moment. I'm going to talk to you really briefly about some of the really common numbers that you will come across, G generally just repeating numbers, ones, twos, threes. There are tons of different number combinations. So um, if you keep coming across something and it's not just the number two over and over again, Google it and put the word angel number after it. You know, if you keep seeing like 1717, then put in, you know, or number 17, 17 angel number. See what it means. Get more information on it. Um, yeah, there's way too many number combinations, obviously, for anyone to cover in a video. This is something else I want to say. So if you come across a number once in a day, obviously you're not going to pay attention, right? We all see numbers all the time. If you come across the same number twice in a day, you're like, oh, I saw the number 50 this morning. And then later you're like, oh, I saw the number 50 again. That's your sign. If you've seen it twice, it's enough. And the reason I'm telling you this is because, <clears throat> like for myself, I'll wait until I've seen it like four times before I'm paying attention, which is, it's silly. It's silly because it was a message after the second time. I don't need to wait until four. Um, so... One of the examples they gave me, and this is something that happens to me a lot. I'll, you know, I'll turn on my phone in the morning and sometimes it'll be like, okay, you have uh, 11 emails waiting and you have 11 missed calls. And it'll be like, all right, 11, 11, boom. You know for sure this is a message. So just keep that in mind. 
Sometimes we disregard things as being a coincidence, but there is no such thing. Open yourself up to receive these messages to help you move along on your spiritual journey and feel more connected to your guides in the process. Okay, so 111. This is the first one I'm going to use. So I'm using 111 as an example, but it could be four ones. It could be the number one. It could be the number 11. Um, in general, when you have ones, multiple ones that are coming through to you, it's symbolizing that a new beginning is on its way, or it could just be acknowledging that you just started a new beginning. So it might just be like, you know, maybe you're, you're looking to move, right? And it's before you've actually found the right place and you keep seeing ones and you're like, Ooh, okay. It's coming soon. Or maybe you just you know, got the place that day, or you're just moving into it, you might see the ones just validating, hey, yep, we see you're, we see you're doing your new beginning. This is the first angel number I used to come across, and it was at the very beginning of my spiritual journey before I was able to channel. Yeah, that, it was, it was like when I had first become aware that there was more to the world than what I could see with my eyes, I started seeing the number 111 or 11, 11, 11. I used to see it everywhere. Okay, for the number two, if you're seeing a bunch of twos, in general, the message of 222 two, two is encouragement from your guides to seek balance and harmony in your life. This could mean that you are working too much, um, could mean that you're not setting boundaries. Uh, you will have to look carefully at your own life whenever you see a bunch of twos, you just have to look at your own life and think, okay, where am I out of balance? The truth is you already know where you're out of balance. They're just calling you out on it so that they're like, hey, you need to bring this into balance because, you know, whenever a message is coming through, you have to take it seriously because your guides want you to have the best and easiest version of your life possible. So if they know that you're working too hard and that you need to learn balance. And if they give you these messages and you ignore them, then what comes next is you get sick or you have an accident or something happens where all of a sudden you have to rest. And then when you get better, if you don't learn from that, then something else happens. And so there's a, your guides will keep coming to teach you something that's important to teach you. But if you can make adjustments just from these little messages, then you can avoid more difficult circumstances. Okay, 333. Number three is about expansion, growth, and abundance. This number is a magical number, and it's often used as part of a magic spell or ritual. So if you think of like people saying, you know, anything three times in a row, holy, 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 and so it is, and so it is, and so it is. You know, this there's magic in using it three times, and so that's why it's done. This is a message from your guides to encourage you to expand yourself creatively or using your talents and abilities in order to bring growth and abundance to yourself and also to others. This is, this is, I wrote this funny. This is a message. That's what I'm missing. This is a message to step forward as a light worker. So it's like, all right, step it up. Time to expand. Time to grow. <laughs> four, four, four. The number four is associated with stability and building a strong foundation. This message is an acknowledgement from your guides that you have been working towards your goals, and it is an encouragement to continue working towards those goals. So sometimes you'll be seeing threes. Threes are like, okay, time to expand, time to grow, time to use your gifts. And then you you go and you do it. You're like, all right, I'm going to grow. I'm going to expand. And then later you start seeing fours. And it's like your guide's going, yes, we see what you're doing. Keep, keep doing this. Five, five, five. So whenever I see a bunch of fives together, 
I literally hear somebody, one of my guides will literally say, change is coming. And I used to get really frustrated with that because I saw it. Um, I used to see it kind of early in my, I mean, I've seen it several times, but I saw it earlier in my spiritual journey and it was intimidating the first time I saw it because, I'll, you know, we're human beings and we're like, what kind of change? I don't think I'm going to like it. And so it kind of stresses us out. We're like, I don't want to change. When really, whenever our guides are saying change is coming, it's never something to scare us. It's always like they are excited. They're like, something good is coming. Because whatever change is coming into your life, it's always bringing you something, even if it doesn't feel like it's bringing you something. Um, they use this to encourage you to understand the power of your choice and that a small choice can lead to big changes. Every time my guides use this with me, there has been a change that perhaps seems overwhelming as I first adjust to it, but it is always for my greatest and highest good in a way that I can easily recognize. So change is coming. If you're in a situation where you don't like your current circumstances, um, you know, like if you are unemployed and you get, and you want to have a job and you see five, 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 then it's like, Yes. <laughs> Change is coming. Yay. <laughs> um, 666. Six, six. So if you see a bunch of sixes, um, if you have any kind of background in certain religions like uh, Christianity, Catholicism, probably a couple other ones, um, that number may seem frightening to you because we've been told that that's a, a negative number or that's a number that brings in uh, dark energy, but it is in fact an angelic number with a positive meaning. Guides may not use this with you because if you come across it and you have that um, frightened reaction, they don't want that. So you might not see this very often because of that, but if you are open to receiving the number and understand that it means something positive, then they're more likely to show it to you. So sixes are a message from your guides that your thoughts may be out of balance and too focused on worldly things. So possibly like finances or survival. Your guides want to redirect your energy to joy and to a higher vibration. Trust that improvements are on the way. So if you get a message with sixes, consider if your thoughts are in a low vibration. Sevens. This is a mystical number often used in rituals. This is a message from your guides that you have followed their instructions and that you are now putting wisdom to work in your life. This is an indication that you will be reaping rewards for your hard work. So sevens is like telling of the future, right? It's like you've done something that's in your own best and highest interests. And your guides are like, hey, this is, this is going to change something down the line. You're not going to notice it right away, but this was important. This is going to change something over here, and you're going to like this. Eights. The number eight is associated with abundance and manifesting. This is an indication that something you are trying to manifest is on its way, or that some form of abundance is on its way to you. So eights are always a good thing to see. Nines, the number nine is a number of conclusion or reaching the end of a cycle. This number is not used to announce um, something that you would find fearful. So, okay, so think of it this way. You're seeing nines and you're like, oh no, it's the, it's the end of something. It's the conclusion of something. You don't want to sit around going, oh, is someone going to die? Is my marriage going to end? Is my job going to end? Am I going to lose my house? Like, your guides are never going to give you a message like that. Never. Um, the When they give you a nine message, it's a positive message. It's telling you, hey, 
you've been working on this lesson or you've been working on this certain karma and you have resolved it, you have fixed it, you, or you've gone through a certain, um, certain uh, season in your life and maybe it was difficult and they're saying, okay, and now we're done with this. This is the end of this and now you can move forward in a new way. And so it's a positive message. Yeah, this is a positive acknowledgement that you are completing a phase of life, a life lesson, or another aspect of your spiritual growth. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about numbers. I'm sure most of you have calculated your life path number, but if you haven't, you might want to do it. It's... I don't know if it's going to like change your world, but it's fun and it's accurate. So why not? Um, if you want to calculate your life path number, you can Google this. I'm going to give you like the most basic of instructions, but you can Google this and research it on your own. Um, calculate your life path number, write out your birthday. So in write out your birthday in numbers and uh, then add each of those numbers together. Some people will have a double digit number after they add all the numbers together. So if you have a double digit number and it's 11, 22, or 33, then you're all done. That's your number. If you have any other double digit number, you add the two numbers together. So if you have like a, if your number is 29, you add two plus nine to get 11. 11 is one of the numbers that you're done once you get to that. Um, otherwise, if you, if you added together, like, oh, I'm trying to think of another example, Metatron, I can't think of examples on the spot. Basically, you want to get it down to a single digit number once you add everything together or the number 11, 22, or 33. And so that'll be your life path number. Um, uh, once you know your life path number. You can research like what it means on the internet. I they have like pages and pages of stuff of what this means. Um, Susan, my business partner, she came across this information. I don't know. Shortly after we um, we had started the business, I would say, and she told me, "Oh my god, oh my god!" I'm like, she's like, "I'm life path eleven. Look!" And then she like showed me um, what it meant. And then, and so I was like, cool. And then, so I added my numbers together and, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm life path 11 too, which is really weird because we're born in, you know, different months, different years, different days. And so it was kind of wild that we were both life path 11. Um, so if you get like 11, 22 or 33, they're considered like master numbers, which just means they hold a different value than merely because if you think about it, 11 is one and one. It should be, you would think, oh, that's supposed to be life path two, but it's different. It holds a different value or frequency than the number two. Um, life path 11s are considered to be bridges between the physical and spiritual realms and tend to be mystical and magical. So Susan sent me like three pages of information, but I'm just giving you that sentence. We were like laughing because we're like, how does this, how is this so accurate? <laughs> so we just thought that was cool. Um, what I wanted to share with you guys is Metatron recently brought forward more information for me regarding um, my and Susan's life path numbers that I thought was interesting. So if you look at like master number 22, it's the master builder number. So master builders are able to take ideas and turn them into concrete reality for the good of humanity. So what Metatron showed me, he's like, yeah, Susan's an 11. You're an 11. When you two work together, now you're a master builder. Together, you two can bring things into the physical world. Um, and that was really cool for me because it's been absolutely true. Like, if Susan or I were working on our own, we could not bring forward the stuff we bring forward. Absolutely not. Um, so it's really cool to see that validated 
in the numbers. Anyhow, let me see what else I have here. That, okay, so that's what I have on numbers. Uh, I'm not going to, okay. I Originally, I was going to talk to you guys about some other topics with this, but I think I'm just going to leave it at numerology, to be honest with you guys. I think this is good enough. Um, if you are interested, let me know what your life path number is and let me know if you feel like um, that matches up with who you are and what your skills are and, and what motivates you, all of that. I'm curious to see. I'm also curious to see if there's any like um, people who have life path 22 or 33. Those seem really interesting to me. So let me know in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.